I'm Ellie Berg. I'm one of the interns at the Office of Sustainability. And I'm Naomi Serrano. I'm the communications intern at the Office of Sustainability. <laughs> Um, so what we wanted to start out with, just to kind of get people going and, I guess, brainstorming on this topic, is what do you think zero waste means? What does zero waste mean to you as a person? Um, or how, like, what are some other, like, common concepts? What comes to mind, yep, when you hear the word zero waste? Minimizing Shout out garbage. garbage. What's What's Minimizing that? your garbage. Minimizing garbage. No plastic. No plastic. Alright, no plastic was the second one. Anything else? Reuse. Yeah, reusing. Alright, so reusables. Okay. That's being very mindful about food products and food waste or not throwing it out. Food waste. Yes. 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 Oh. Sorry. <laughs> So what were you gonna say? Local. Uh, local. Buying locally local. grown. Right. Buying less clothing in general. So buying less clothing and otherwise. Yes. Buy less. Any other ones? I mean, I don't know if it falls into it, but like energy and water waste, like being more mindful of your practices. Water. Definitely. And I think that's definitely one of those things that gets Forgotten. Yeah, you definitely, people start getting into this mindset and thinking about the waste, but then completely ignoring how wasteful they are being in other sense. So that's, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, well, these are like all great examples, and I mean, they all encompass what it means to be zero waste. Um, so we wanted to host this workshop because, I don't know, this is like, I guess, reducing our waste is something that's really big to Noemi and I. Um, so we wanted to like share what we do, um, like simple things that you could do to help reduce your overall just like imprint on the environment. Um, and so we'll probably touch on pretty much all of those, but hopefully give you a little new information. Um, but just as a, I don't know, I guess how your waste works in my life, um, I just like aim to reduce whatever I can first. Um, just like trying to say like no to plastics, like all the thin plastics, all the food packaging, buying in bulk, um, using reusable, so basically all of the things that you guys said here. Except for me, I try not to let, as we do live in a society where um, it's pretty hard to be like zero waste, so I try not to let like the little things get to you. Um, especially if you want to like move towards like a zero waste lifestyle, obviously like it's really important to try and hit that zero waste, but if you're not perfect, like nobody is. <laughs> So why do you guys think it is important to decrease your waste? Pollution. Pollution. Okay. Methane from landfills. Okay. Landfills. Where does this waste usually end up? Pollution. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that I'm in Southern really California amazing. and the amount of, I mean, I think this goes for every beach anywhere, but being from California around the beach, there's definitely a lot of trash. <laughs> a lot, a lot of trash. Yeah. I went on a beach cleanup a few, last time I was there, and I found like this whole set of, um, what's the rollers, the, the roller curler thing. things? Yeah, at first I didn't know what it was, and I was like, I keep picking up these things, and they're all very similar. Like, I was walking this very long path, and I found one after another after another, and I was like, turned to my cousin, and I was like, what is this? Plastic. Like hair curlers, so you definitely find some interesting things. Yeah, um, and then, like another way to think about this question is like, what brought you guys here today? And I mean, feel free to like say it like is, and you want to move towards a zero waste lifestyle. You just want to reduce your waste, but more about sustainability. What are you guys here for today? Preserving the earth. Preserving the earth, just in general. Yeah. Animals. Yeah. For me, it was learning about the Pacific Garbage Patch and just hearing it that it's the size of, I mean, I keep hearing that it's the size of Texas. <coughs> it's, it's hard to wrap your mind around. Yeah. yeah, yeah. so for me, that was the turning point. Yeah. And I think we oftentimes hear of that and just imagine like plastic in its 
typical form, right, sitting in the middle of the ocean, but then we also have to realize that it does break down with the waves and sunlight, it breaks down, so there's little particles all throughout the ocean that we're, there's more than we can see. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's a World Economic Forum, I don't know, you guys probably heard this stat before, but it's, um, they say by 2050 there's going to be more plastic in our oceans than there are fish, by the way, which is kind of scary. Um, and that's really, yeah, like let that sink in for a bit, and that's, it's kind of scary. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what we're here for today, like all of these things. Uh, so Noah is a communication intern, I'm a waste and recycling intern. Um, so obviously this hits like very home with me, but this is like simple things that anyone can do just to try to live like a more sustainable lifestyle. Yeah. Oh, arrow. Right arrow. There we go. So today we're going to talk about uh, the six R's of zero waste. So there's a lot. I mean, you grow up hearing like the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. Um, and there's five, six, seven. People come up with all sorts of R's. We narrowed it down to six. Uh, kind of adopted it off of B. Johnson. If you know who that is, she wrote like a book on like how to live a zero waste lifestyle. Um, and so these kind of come from there. So we're just going to go through uh, each of these and talk about how to live a more zero waste lifestyle in these six like principles. And then on that note, they do go in a certain order. So okay. it's refuse, then reduce, reuse, slash rehomes, repair, and then recycling and rotting should be like the last alternative. So yeah, ideally, yeah, the last resorts. Ideally, you want to do. Avoid recycling because obviously recycling is downcycling. It's just gonna, it's gonna end up in the landfill eventually. I'm not a big fan of recycling in that sense. Like I should. Yeah, fair try. <laughs> I do recycle. I'm all for recycling, but I don't think it should be your go-to. So I think that's one of the things that I hope you get from this. Not just. I feel like recycling has become kind of like our easy way out. We yeah. take plastic, it's like, oh, oh it's I fine, recycle it. I recycle it, yeah, exactly. It's all good. But so, there's like, there's so much more outside of that than when you really want to reduce your waste. Like, you have to think outside of just recycling. <laughs> Definitely. So, refuse. Uh, what do you guys think we mean by this R? Shout out some examples of what you think we're going to say. Refuse. And I, I mean this as an action, not as the, like, noun, refuse, like, refuse. <laughs> yeah, like, refusing a plastic bag. So okay. no plastic bags. Another one? Refusing styrofoam, I guess, when you go out to eat, like to-go containers, maybe? Yeah, that's a good one. Sure. Yeah, yeah, so this is the short list that we came up with. Obviously, this is kind of all-inclusive. Um, so we have um, just a kind of a short list here. So first off, plastic bags. I nailed it. Um, but on that note, but yes. So we do have a reusable bag with us. But oftentimes people think refusing the plastic bag, right? But then you go and you get your produce and what do you put it in? Also plastic bags, right? So like you have to realize that you know, we have produce bags here and we're also giving away produce bags. We're having a little raffle at the end. Um, so yeah, just being mindful that like, while it's a great step to not take that plastic bag, you're still using plastic in other senses, so. Yes. Uh um, so second, uh, straws, um, this is a huge one, I mean straws are everywhere, and I know that everyone knows this, um, but you can refuse straws in almost every single sense. There's no reason that you need a straw, I guess, um, they're for convenience, you know? So um, we like to recommend, like, I don't know, sometimes people, like what did it for me was I took a plastic band pledge. Um, and that shortly evolved and like turned into like saying no to straws and everything like that. And these are some of like the easiest things you can do because it stops the waste at like before it's created, if that makes sense. So refusing these in the first place will help reduce it at the end. Um, with, the stir with the straws, um, if you're not comfortable just drinking straight out of a cup, I know my mom for some reason hates just drinking straight out of it. So there's things like reusable straws. I have stainless steel ones, which I actually don't have with us there. Um, but there's stainless steel straws. There's yeah. straws. Actually, McDonald's is fun fact. If anyone didn't know this, uh, I think it's McDonald's in all of its uh, like UK locations is actually moving to paper straws, which is really cool. Interesting. So they're trying to like phase out all of their plastic straws by 2020, even though they claim that they are recyclable. Most straws are not. You know, when you like when you look at the facility that the all the recycling ends up in, they're very not likely to get recycled. <laughs> so reusable straws, so um, straws, great option. Yes, 
And so those are all um, a part of single-use plastics, and so this is like an overarching um, saying no to plastics, like you guys said. Uh, single-use plastics are like one of the hardest things to get out of your life once you realize it, and it's kind of upsetting, but you can always start to like, once you start recognizing it, like you will know it and you will find alternatives. There are alternatives for just about anything. Um, so moving on from single-use plastics, uh, receipts. Oh. No. Oh, plastic bottles. I didn't even say that one. Plastic bottles. Plastic bottles is a single use of plastic. It's the same thing. Um, and then we have alternatives here. Get a mug. They're so useful. You save money when you go to places. When you go to a coffee shop, they give you like 10 cents back for bringing your own mug. Many places in Madison do this. Uh, Gordon's does it. Um, coffee Bites, Badger Markets. Um, and you can even get, so like I, I wall. yeah, double wall or like, this is mine, I use it for a water bottle, but when I'm in a crunch, I use it for tea, I use it for coffee. It's literally all purpose. <laughs> um, and then most places are pretty comfortable with like you taking it, um, even like a smoothie. You oh, walk yeah. up to, I mean, there's no jump juice anymore, but you could have definitely walked up and been like, I want a smoothie, can you, do you mind putting it in this? Most places are totally fine with that. Once you get in the hang of like carrying a reusable bottle with you, like it just stays in your backpack and you can kind of forget about it. And that's just like one of the easiest things that you can do that reduces plastic bottles everywhere. Um, okay, so then moving on, um, a little more paper thing. Uh, receipts, receipts are huge. You can say no to a receipt um, if they give you the option or if you can ask ahead of time, that's phenomenal. Uh, most receipts don't get recycled anyways, they end up in people's pockets, they end up crumpled on the ground. And I know um, the Office of Sustainability actually worked with uh, the dining halls to like do their receipt reduction. Um, but this is something that like happens in everyday life. That is just like a small simple action that like once you start doing it you're in the habit and like it'll stick. Uh, going along with that unnecessary freebies. So we are a problem because we offer the unnecessary freebies. But <laughs> not quite unnecessary. Yes. So, <laughs> so the point was that you were able to opt out of it. So if you had one, hopefully you did opt out of it. And yes. that would have been unnecessary. But the point with the reusable produce bags was this idea that not all of us have them or even know about them, so we wanted to offer that to you guys. I mean, freebies are great if there's something that you can use, but if they're, for example, so we're giving away produce bags, that's something that people can use. So if you're trying to like give away freebies for like a student org or something like that, try and like think about how you can make something that's gonna be useful rather than something that's gonna just like stick around. All right, reduce, can anybody Think of what we might talk about in this one. That's different. What we mean by reduce? Yes. They might sound similar, but they're actually quite different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Limiting consumption. Okay. So limiting consumption. Yeah. We're just gonna go with that. So yes, limiting consumption. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> That's, yep, exactly. So as we were talking um, with the plastic water bottles, so we. Reusing the plastic water bottles and opting for things like reusable water bottles, um, bringing your own mugs, and switching to cloth napkins. So I have one here, um, rather than like paper napkins, just carry your own. I pack a lunch every single day and I bring a napkin and then I wrap, I just grab a fork and spoon, knife, whatever I'm gonna need for that day from my own like kitchen, wrap it in the napkin that I'm gonna be using and take it, um, which I think is a very affordable way to do it. I know oftentimes when you like Google Zero Waste and you start watching all these cool YouTube videos, you oftentimes hear of like um, like to-go utensils, right? So like they're pitching this thing of like buying a $20 utensil kit that comes in a nice little pouch and it's obviously really nice and it's convenient, but if you don't have $20 or you just don't want to spend that $20, like just grab what you already have, most of us if you live in an apartment, I'm assuming you have some sorts of, of utensils in your kitchen already, so take what you have. Um, cloth napkins, fine in bulk. Oftentimes we think of food, which it's great to buy food in bulk, but other things do come in in bulk. Um, this is conditioner. Conditioner from the community pharmacy off of State Street, so right here in Madison. It's a little pricier than you're just buying a typical bottle of conditioner, but you're reducing that waste. You go in and fill your own jar. I bought that one because I didn't have one, but definitely if you already have one, whether it's plastic that you're reusing or a mason jar, anything that you want to use definitely works. Um, making your own products. That's beauty products, 
skincare products, um, anything really, cleaning products. Making your own spices, it applies yeah, everywhere. Yeah, all of this. That allows you to customize, really pay attention to what you're putting in there. Um, and it's usually a lot more affordable as well. Yeah, as then, in like buying in bulk, if you like buy a bunch of, like if you want to make your own soap, if you take like, I don't know, like twice a year and just make a bunch of soap, you buy all your products in bulk, make all your soap and you get to the good fit a year, half year. Um, so a lot of these, as I'm sure you're noticing, tie into each other and they'll overlap and really does yeah. a lot. Yeah, you can make your own laundry detergent as well. Like literally anything you can think of, yeah. you can probably make. And a lot um, of them are usually have like more natural and less chemicals if um, you don't like putting chemicals in your body or something like that. So. Yes. And then again, reusable produce bags. Just reusable bags. Just, just build up a stockpile. I have a, I have a bag of reusable bags. Actually, make sure you carry it though, because yes. back to my mom, she has a ton and she's always forgetting them. So like, that also doesn't really help, right? Okay. So reuse and rehome. Okay, reuse is easy. What do you guys What do you guys think you mean by like rehome? What does it mean to like rehome something? Instead of throwing something out, like say you have like a broken piece of furniture or something, instead of throwing it out, maybe trying to um, get rid of it um, by giving it to someone or donating it to like I don't know Goodwill or like um, that restore place. You know, like finding someone who could maybe repurpose it instead of just putting it at the end of the curb. Yeah, definitely. Was that what you were gonna say? Or? Yeah, given Jean the poem. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so this will kind of relate in with my next one a little bit as you touched on broken things, but um, so for a reuse or rehome, so first one, um, holding a swap, uh, so this, we actually have an ASM clothing swap coming up, so that's really cool. Uh, Friday yeah. 1 to 5, is that right? Friday 1 to 5 at the SAC, there is a clothing swap. Um, so yeah, definitely swaps, that can go with anything, it could be something organized, on campus, like the ASM clothing swap, um, or it could be something even more casual. Just text a group of friends, be like, "Hey, do you guys want to have a swap? Get together, watch a movie, snacks, whatever." Just you can do it as a casual thing, and then bring club. a few things and yeah, switch out what you might not want. Um, and then so much of that secondhand buying secondhand is great. You can definitely find quality items at the thrift store um, for way cheaper. And I think oftentimes we think of clothing, buying clothing secondhand, but that goes for basically anything. If another big thing with zero waste is like mason jars, so you oftentimes think oh. that you have to like go out and buy a mason jar, right? You can definitely go into the thrift store and find a ton of mason jars. So with a lot of things here, like you can definitely find that at the thrift store. So just it's, think of that. Like it's, more than you would think. Definitely. For example, I get, I get my board games from Goodwill. Who would have thought? But, Allie is a big board game. Yes, yeah, so like my board games, my puzzles, Goodwill has a bunch of them and they're all awesome. Like, and they're like a dollar. Saving money yeah. and raising it. Yeah, that goes with everything. Um, if you're moving in, I, when I moved into my apartment this year, I had a few things that I needed to buy. I just went to the thrift store and I really enjoyed it because I got to buy like utensils that were like really cool. Like they had some nice design and they're very unique things and they're way cheaper than you would ever find them at like Target or even like Walmart. So there's definitely that and like that you just pour in some Clorox some water or however you like to disinfect your stuff and it's good to go. And then actually a little pro tip with this for you, those of you that don't know, um, UW actually has a repurposing um, I guess department and it's called SWAP. Um, it's called Surplus with a Purpose. And so that is open to UW departments, uh, UW students, but it's also open to the public. So if you're not a UW student or affiliate, um, and if you just Google like Swap UW, um, you'll find all their store, uh, store locations and hours. And this is actually across the uh, UW system. So if you go to their online auction, like you can find, I almost bought like a MacBook off of there rather than like buying a new one or something. And like they have like, I don't even know so much that you could like couldn't even think of. I go there for when I'm moving into a new apartment and I need a desk chair and you can get one for like five dollars. But that's a cool like UW resource that we got. Yes. And also, so our last point, donate with a purpose. I think most people have gotten really good about just throwing things away. Um, but it's also not the most beneficial thing to just donate it all to a thrift store because oftentimes if they don't get sold, 
they end up in other countries or they also end up in the trash. So I think donating with a purpose is a really great point. So paying attention to what you're getting rid of and where it's going. So things like linens, um, women's shelters are great places to donate those. Clothing for women's shelters are also great spots. Um, I think I was reading that toys, I don't know if this is everywhere, but like some police stations take toys. Um, I don't know how that works, but yeah, just like paying attention to where you look if you're trying to get rid of, and I'm pretty sure a quick Google search, you can find some places that will make way more, a way better use out of it than just sending it to the thrift store. Definitely. And this goes along with like posting a swap, like rather than getting rid of all your clothing right away, like before I take any of my stuff to Goodwill, like I'll go to my roommates and I'll say like, hey, do you like this shirt? And like half the time I'll probably get rid of like half the stuff that I'm using there and then it's going to someone that I know and then like I will be able to like see that they're using it and then you have like more of a personal connection and that feels kind of cool. Um, but yeah, we always like to kind of like donate with a purpose as like your first guideline and then like donate to thrift stores because obviously like they're great, Goodwill's awesome. Um, but if you can like make a personal connection where you know like you're gonna find that object's best use, that's always a better connection to make. Repair. What do you guys think? Like what, what would you probably not repair? in your life, that you're just like, let's just throw it out and get a new one. What are some things like that? Anything electronic. Electronic. <laughs> Those are toughies. <laughs> Any other ones? Yeah. Sometimes my hairbrush breaks, and I'm at a loss for what to do. Ooh, so hairbrush. Interesting. Your hairbrush interested. breaks. I've never had a hairbrush break on me, honestly. <laughs> All right, so we're here. Uh, so uh, my first point on here was learn to sew and include your friends. Um, I actually taught myself how to sew, I mean, like, I learned, I don't know, way long ago, but over winter break even, I was sitting, like, sewing up holes in my yoga pants, or, like, I had a friend with, like, a hole in their armpit, and, like, those things are really actually easy to sew, and I was able to do that all freehand, like, I just have a needle and some thread and that's all that I use basically. You can look up like a nice sewing technique for like a specific type of fabric or something, but it's like surprisingly easy to teach yourself how to sew, sew or mend up like small holes and things like that. Yeah. Um, and also on that, if you don't know how to sew and you know someone that enjoys it, so like <laughs> Allie in this case was like, hey yeah, if you have anything that needs to get sewn, like or I saw a hole in her pants and I was yeah. like, you no, know I mean I'll fix that for you. She's like, yeah, so like, yeah, definitely. So and yeah, so, it, so I mean, you, use your about. friends, but also include your friends. Um, so yes. we have one of our supervisors at the OS, at the OS um, <laughs> actually he did this with a group of interns and he told us how he does this with his friends and they'll like get together and like bring any objects that they need repaired or um, sewed or anything like that. And then since you have such a large group of people in one room, Chances are that like you uh, with all this shared knowledge like someone's gonna know how to like help you or like find the resources that you need or anything like that. Um, so if I have something broken, I usually just I like first take it to like any friends that I know. I'm like, hey, can you fix this? Or like, what can I do with this? Something kind of like that. Um, so including your friends in that, and then you also get them in like a more sustainable mindset. <laughs> um, and so yeah, fixing old devices before buying new ones. This is this is a hard one. Um, because electronics are technical. That's not like that's not what we do. We we don't know how to fix those. Um, some things are easier than others. For example, you can't fix it yourself though. There's definitely places that can. But yeah, that's for true. example, iPhone cord that was like <laughs> thirty something dollars, and it started splitting really quickly. Which happens to like all of them. Yeah. Yes. So I had no idea what to do with it. But you it's buy some little, electrical yes. tape and you just like well, wrap it like around there or something. I don't even know. I brought it to my dad when I was home for break and I was like, hey, this is splitting. I don't know what to do with it. He took it and like five minutes later he was like, here. It's a little messy, but it works. It works fine. The point. Yep, it works perfectly fine and... Save $30 and now yes. you don't have a cord ending up in a landfill somewhere that's not being used at all. Uh, but on that note, if you are going to be recycle any electronics or e-waste, uh, to get somewhere responsible, please. Uh, electronics are actually a huge problem in landfills, um, and so many of those parts and metals can be reused or like melted, some sort, like they can be repurposed. Um, so we have I'm all this information on our website under... <laughs> re We're getting there! Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> well, I just yeah. meant the electronics especially. Yes. We got oh, that. So we actually do have a lot of uh, specialty, which will be on our next slide. Um, 
We do have a lot of specialty recycling uh, like centers, towers on campus. So there's one in Union South, there's one in uh, College Library, there's some in the dorms. Uh, for all like, oh yeah, yeah. So they've got like eyeglasses, e-waste, batteries, stuff like that. Um, we'll talk about them in a sec. Uh, so uh, lastly, repurposing broken or unused items. So exactly like you said, if you can like take a broken item and maybe you can't repair it, but you can repurpose it as something else. I saw this and I was like, that's super cute. Of course it was on Pinterest and of course I love it. And I like definitely want to do that now. And like that's something that's so easy that you would probably never think of. So it's really, I mean, Pinterest is great for this kind of stuff, but also just like getting creative about like what you can do with different kinds of things. Like I have just like, I don't know what the little like Russian dolls are, but I have like mason jars stacked inside oh, mason jars and like, I use them for I use them for my lunches. I use them for trinkets. Um, I actually use them to collect like uh, bottle caps before I recycle them. Like I love containers because you can use them for literally anything. But there's so much other like things that you can do to be creative about it. Um, one example of this was our uh, clean the stream project. Um, so she took uh, like recycled and trash uh, stuff like that and actually designed it into like an aesthetic art piece. Um, so that's something that I think is really cool because there's a lot of like artistic things that you can do with recycled or repurposed things. Uh, a lot of people do things with like keys, metals, coins, I don't know. Get creative. <laughs> Recyclable. What do you think we're gonna talk about on this slide? <laughs> that like is outside of like know how to recycle. <clears throat> they didn't have any like pro recycling tips, something that not many people do that like you think should be done more? Katrina, you're gonna raise your hand. No? <laughs> yeah, over um one thing that a lot of people don't know is that um, you can recycle a lot of parts on your coffee, like re like non your single use coffee container. Um so that's one thing. That's actually a really important part of recycling. Um, so kind of like Kat said, um, something that's really important with recycling is breaking things down. Um, so a lot of things in our society now are like multi-part items, or sometimes they are called monstrous items, and you have to physically separate them into like separate pieces in order to recycle. Um, we don't have a coffee cup here, I didn't think of that Kat, but that's a good idea. So for example, a coffee cup, uh, you take the lid off and that goes in the commingle or like the regular recycling plastics. You take the sleeve off and that goes in your mixed paper, and you take the cup and that goes in your trash. Does anybody, do you guys know why the paper cup goes in the trash? There's styrofoam in it. There's a plastic lining in it. So that's one of those monstrous products where you actually can't separate it. So it's made out of paper, but it's also made out of a plastic like lining that is used to keep things from leaking, essentially. Um, Same goes with like milk cartons, like that paper products that- Some have a, they yeah. have waxy. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously you're not gonna, you're not gonna pull it off and recycle it. And unfortunately that means it's trash. Um, but 90% of the time, I mean, so as like a waste recycling intern, I do trash audits all the time, and the amount of just like, I don't know, I guess complete put together coffee cups I find is kind of disheartening. Um, nobody takes the time to separate these things, and that means that like, there are thousands of coffee cups per day on this campus alone that aren't being recycled. Um, and even worse, they're contaminating other streams because they're getting thrown in the wrong places. Um, so, educate yourself. Know your local streams. Uh, recycling is one of those things that it sucks because it's different in many different places. So, uh, we like to say, like, know what your rules are in your city or your location. And, for example, City of Madison has a little bit different recycling rules than the University of Madison. And that's something that you have to deal with. And it's often hard, but uh, once you educate yourself, you'll have it down very easily. You won't be questioning yourself every time you go to recycle something. Um, and so we have a ton of information on this. You can't really see that right now, but it says learn more at sustainability.wis.edu slash recycling. So we have a recycling page with um, all of our information on it. And it talks about uh, like single stream versus multi-stream, which multi-stream is what UW does uh, because we get more money for separating our streams more. Um, so know, know your local rules and regulations about recycling. Uh, City of Madison actually has a great recyclopedia. So if you like ever need to recycle something around you, like look in that recyclopedia. Um, and then so specialty recycling, furniture, electronics, medication, styrofoam, all of this stuff. UW has like a way for you to recycle all of these things um, with either swap or our specialty uh, 
specialty towers or, um, well, I guess like medications and start folks, those are a little more you kind of have to get handled. But uh, City of Madison is actually better for those because they have, like, they tell you where to take everything in their recyclopedia. Um, but make sure that you use specialty recycling um, because there are so many things that can be recycled that aren't recycled on a daily basis just because they're not used on a daily basis. And then lastly, try recycling plastic film. This was like my new thing this year. And that's this little stuff that you find everywhere. And so this is like plastic film, or we call it thin plastics. Um, it's anything like this that you can like ball up in your hand and like manipulate. Um, this is all plastic. Will it be recycled? Yes, because I'm doing it. Normally, no, because these are too thin, they're too small, they blow away in the wind and they basically just won't get recycled at uh, the recycling facility. So if you want to learn more information about this, this is super cool. It's called a MRF. It's called a Materials Re uh, Recovery Facility. And if you look up videos on how they work, it's actually like really insightful and it'll help you when you're thinking about like uh, where to put things. For example, I now know that like bottle caps and um, like any most container lids, if they aren't on the container, they'll fall through the machinery and then they'll just get swept away into a big pile and get put into the landfill. That's another tip with recycling. Keep all your caps on. And this is actually a lot harder for, um, I guess, like elderly people uh, because I don't even know back when I'm kind of looking at you guys here, but they used to tell people to, I know you guys aren't this old, but they used to tell people to like take all your caps off and like take like keep your cap separate from your recycling. And so like I go to my grandparents and they're like super confused when I tell them that. But that's actually, yeah, that is a huge problem at recycling facilities. Um, so if you want to look up some more information on that, look up a MRF. Uh, Pelletary, which is one of the local recycling places, has a great video on like their system. So plastic film, I'll just go over this real quick. Um, a lot of times I see stuff like this. I actually got this from my Net Geo magazine. And it says recyclable on there, which is super cool. And a lot of them actually don't tell you that. For example, like this one doesn't. Um, and certain types of plastic film are like better to recycle than others. For example, like bread bags or cereal bags are good, but um, some other like chip bags are not because they have different like chemicals in them that like you can't recycle. They're not just thin plastic like this. Um, but how you recycle these is the same way that you actually recycle plastic bags. Um, and a lot of people don't know this, so this is this, like this would get recycled the same way that a plastic bag would. So if you go to any of your local grocery stores or places that collect those kind of bags, they probably say plastic film uh, around the top. And you can deposit this stuff in those um, bins as well, and then it should get recycled there. Um, so I like to take like a larger bag, which I usually just take like a plastic bag anyways. And I'll just shove all of my thin plastics in there until it's full, and then I go and I drop it off at the nearest like location that I can. And that's um, I've actually found that like I fill these up pretty quickly. There's a lot of like little thin plastics around everything. I mean, so this is something that uh, we'll touch on a little bit. But these are all compostable uh, utensils, and every single pack is wrapped in thin plastic. And then get this. These were all inside this bag, which is just makes no sense to me. Whenever we get packages at our office, I open up a box, and it's a box like this big. I pull out a bunch of plastic bubbles, and then the object is like this big, and it's just phenomenal. I don't understand it. <laughs> that stuff can be recycled, and that's actually pretty cool. I think that's really cool because that's everywhere. You have thin plastics everywhere. Um, and then, yeah, if you want to learn anything more, go to sustainability with study slash recycling. Uh, we'll have more information on there. And um, hopefully we're going to eventually get some more zero waste things up there. Sorry. But just to emphasize, recycling should be one of the last resorts. If you do follow the whole refuse, reduce, reuse, repair, and rehome, then hopefully you should end up with too much to recycle. So it is really remembering that whole step to really have to like, avoid it. Recycling. Yes. So rot. The picture kind of helps, but yes. like this. Composting. Yes. I'm just going to go with that because yes, composting. <laughs> um, so freezer compost. That's what I do. Just I just have a container that I like, I don't know, yay big plastic container that I bought um, at St. Denny's, a thrift store. I put all my food scraps in there and then I throw it in the freezer when it fills up. I dropped it off on campus. 
Yeah, so this is something that I started doing, I think, about last year um, when I found about F.H. Kane's uh, compost recycling program. So they have something called a full cycle freight, um, and that comes around Madison, and it stops at certain locations all around. And they essentially take a big bike, they pick up compost from all these locations, which are all public locations, and they bring it back and they use it in their community gardens. And so that was how I initially got started doing this. I was like, okay, how can I compost in my apartment that's not going to make my roommates hate me? And a freezer compost is the best possible thing you can do for that because it doesn't smell because you're freezing it. Um, and it takes up relatively little space. I mean, I just keep mine in like a, I don't know, a small Ziploc or something container. And then, yeah, when it fills up, I bring it to our office and I dump it out. Um, so FHK has a couple sites. Um, I would check those out. What? No, <laughs> nothing. Uh, I would check those out and see their locations to see like if you're close to one of those. Otherwise, um, some other places that have compost are like Union South has composting, Granger has composting in their Capital Cafe. Um, there's a couple other campus buildings, like if you work at a building or in a department, you can see if your um, building has compost outside of there that you could possibly use. Um, so if you want like, to talk about that or like see what your options are, feel free to come up and talk to one of us afterwards um, and we can help you like figure out based on where you're located, what works best for you. Also on the FH King note, um, there are the sites that you said, but FH, FH King does also have their office in the SAC, third floor of the SAC. They have a compost bin in there that you can just drop off things, things at. So it's East Campus Mall, which mm -hmm. is, again, very close. So a lot of these are like more accessible than you think. Hopefully, eventually, in the university time scale, we'll be getting uh, compost more like involved in um, I guess, or I guess people more involved in composting on campus because it's not very big right now. But uh, these are your options, or probably your better options for us like right now. And then lastly, so this is the very last one on there because you don't want to use these, but if you have to, use compostable. So I've got a couple of compostable products here. Um, fun fact, all of our dining to-go products, every single thing that you pick up in a dining hall will be compostable. That's pretty cool. And a lot of people don't know that on campus. So all of these, they say, they say prime, made from 100% renewable and sustainable materials. And a lot of things will say 100% compostable, industrially compostable, things like that. Biodegradable is kind of a weird one. Um, so I've got like bowls like these, or actually I got these as a gift from someone. They're like compostable utensils to take along with me, and then I can just toss them out with my excess food. Um, but also on that note, like she said, this should also be, like, recycling, it should be a lot of some sort. Because um, sadly, there's some places that provide these compostable products, right? But then they don't actually have anywhere for you to put it. So yeah. I was up in Wyoming um, over oh, this winter is break. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, it happens all over the place. But I noticed in Wyoming, um, they had compostable coffee cups. And I was really excited. I was like, OK, well, this is great. I don't have my reusable mug with me. But they have compostable coffee cups, right? And they even had signs, like, talking about how they don't give lids because those aren't, like, I guess, recyclable there, right? Um, so I took the hot chocolate and the compostable coffee cup, and then at the end I was like, I only see a trash can, so, like, where does it go, right? And I walk up to the front, like, the cashier or whatever, and I was like, your compostable coffee cup, where do I throw it? He's like, oh, it just goes in the trash. So, like, right there, like, it, there's no point there. So a lot of businesses are trying to move to these compostable products because it's greener, but it still ends up in the trash. Yeah. So just minding that, like, if you can stay away from the compostable products, also, like, do avoid. Um, but can you guys think of anything besides, like, to-go containers and utensils that are compostable? Anything at all? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. and food. Sorry, I should have said that. Yeah. What were you talking about? Tissues compostable? I thought about that. So the thing with tissues is that uh, they contain, like, human fluids, for lack of a better term, um, and so a lot of places will use their compost to cover food or crops and such like that, so you actually don't want those, um, you don't want tissues in your compost. Uh, usually things like napkins, paper towels, newspaper, essentially any paper product that is gonna, you, I don't know, I guess the way I think about like compost is always like, is this natural, is it gonna break down in nature if I just like threw it on the grass, like eventually. And like if you're like, okay, yeah, I probably would, then it's probably also compostable. Um, it's like just a very loose thing, but um, there's also things like compostable toothbrushes. So bamboo toothbrushes. I don't know if any of you guys have heard of that. Um, those are definitely great because obviously toothbrushes is one of those things that you switch out every few weeks 
where you're supposed to. Um, and then, yeah, a bamboo comb, hair comb. Um, yeah. But things, sorry, things like toothbrushes, you obviously switch out every few weeks. They end up in the trash. They're usually made out of plastic, right? So going with bamboo toothbrushes is a great option. Um, they're usually pretty pricey. So I bought them off of Amazon, um, which the bristles aren't compostable, so those do go in the landfill, which obviously isn't perfect, but the whole, like the toothbrush part of it is compostable, the bristles end up in the trash. I personally think that's a better option because less is going to landfill than like throwing an entire plastic toothbrush, right? So doing what you can in that. Did you have a comment? Um, just, it's a little extreme, but there's composting toilets. So, right. um, I guess if you want to live kind of like an off the grid lifestyle, I mean, there's always that. Yeah. Like, so yeah, I think if you haven't noticed by now, it's a lot of like what you're willing to do. There's definitely some more extreme options, and if you have the time and you're willing to do that, those are great. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of convenience. Obviously, plastic. That's why the problem is so big with plastic because it's so convenient, and that's what we find. So like, it's definitely, you have to be willing to. And I make the effort. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So the takeaways. Just got three loose ones mm -hmm. um, that kind of sum up like a lot of the points that we touched on. Yeah. So emphasizing the buying secondhand and just really getting rid of that idea that like only certain things come secondhand. So like, like I mentioned earlier, clothing is a big one that you hear, and you oftentimes also think like secondhand clothing like it's terrible quality or it's like stained and torn up or like smelly. There's definitely, I personally really like St. Vincent, Vincent de Paul's. Um, I know with places like Goodwill, at least the ones in Madison, like I don't really shop there because every time I go, like I really have to pay attention to what I'm picking up and make sure there's no stains or like little rips here and there. But with St. Vincent de Paul's, um, I think the way they like select their clothing is like great. I've never had a problem. And it's, great. it's obviously more affordable than buying new, and there's great pieces, um, unique pieces, and so yeah, that's clothing. But then just anything in general, if you're buying into an apartment, all or, my books secondhand. Yes, textbooks yeah. is a huge one. Uh, textbooks too. Or yeah, textbooks, books textbooks. in general. Um, and then yeah, so the next one, buying reusable. Um, so buying reusable whenever possible. Um, that way you reduce that waste right up front. Um, there are more so sustainable alternatives to almost anything. You can repurpose something to use it um, in like another way. Uh, a lot, like we said, a lot of this is like kind of just getting out of your comfort zone. You really do have to make an effort into this. Um, but a lot of them are just like small little changes that you won't even notice yourself doing. Um, so buying reusable. Oh, with re sorry, oh, with okay. reusables, there's so many things come in reusable options that you oh. might not even think of. Um, things like menstrual products. It's touch you one, some people don't feel comfortable with that, but I think something very natural, obviously it happens, you have to deal with it. Um, conventional tampons and pads have chemicals that are terrible for our bodies, um, and then also you're switching them out, they're ending up in the trash. So there's things like, if you like, if you prefer tampons, there's the Diva Cup, things like that. Um, there's also reusable pads that you, yeah, reusable cloth pads that you just wash, um, it's your blood, I mean, so. <laughs> however you feel about that, like, but that's what I'm saying, it's really, like, it's up to you. If you feel comfortable with that, then, like, you can definitely find, like, there's also, like, toilet paper, so it's up to yeah. whatever you're comfortable yeah. with is what we're trying to get at, but essentially you can find so many things that you wouldn't even think of in a reusable option. Okay. Um, and then lastly, so, say no to plastic. Try and just reduce your overall consumption of, like, any single use plastics, um, and a lot of this can be tied in, in, like, so many ways of your life, but some of the easiest ones are, like we said, uh, refusing uh, the plastic bottles, straws, um, plastic bags, anything like that. Those are all just like very simple, easy changes that you can like easily swap something out for. That's like a very common yeah. product. Going with stainless steel, um, bamboo, glass. Buy reusable. Yes. <laughs> yep. Okay. So, I think that's awesome.